Hello lovely people, how are you all today? I hope you're well. Welcome to December. Oh, where has the year gone? Oh my goodness. It's so dark already and it's only two o'clock. We've definitely moved into winter. Not because it's cold, it doesn't feel cold at all. Um, I think we've maybe had a couple of frosts in the last month or so, but no, it's nothing to do with the cold. It's all about the light at this time of year. I try, whenever possible, I try to be outside for an hour or so each day over winter. Especially in the morning when it tends to be a bit brighter. <coughs> Excuse me, that's the residue of my cold. Um, because I know that I'm prone to the winter blues. It's nice to spend some time indoors being cosy and having that, what's it called, hug, hig, hug, that Scandinavian um, coziness. It's lovely to have that. But if I didn't get outside and get some light hitting the backs of my eyeballs, I get really quite down in the dumps. So, yes, it's definitely winter. We've definitely lost so much light, but we're heading towards the shortest day. So in what a matter of 20 odd days, before we know it, the days will start to gradually get a bit longer and then we can start to get excited because then it'll be a whole new year to play in the garden. Yay! So <laughs> enough of that. If you get the chance, get outside, get some sunlight, not for your vitamin D at this time of year, but purely for that mental boost and yeah, just, just keep yourself well up here over the winter by giving yourself a bit of extra light. Let's go and have a look at how the garden is doing at the beginning of December. Oh, it seems so dark and it's only, I don't know, it's about half past two in the afternoon. I've just, before I start showing you around the garden, I've just given the grass its very last trim of the year. So now, um, I won't touch this now till, oh, probably into March. Um, and what I've done today is all the edge trimmings, because I'm desperate for mulch. I've, I've kind of scooped up all the trimmings from the edges to help to mulch my sprouts, because I don't want any bare ground. Anyway, so, bed number one, still being really productive. All these cabbages, they've been massively knocked about in the wind. And I say it to myself every year, say, Vivi, for goodness sakes, give them all a steak. And if you remember this year, I'd eyed up some fantastic sticks and poles in the burn pile, but then I was a bit too late and they got burnt before I could get to them. So, yes, I know that that's something I need to do. <laughs> So hopefully I will get onto that next year. So I've been having a few away. Um, I, I also, I tend to, I'll, before the head is properly formed, that one's just starting to heart up a bit, before the head is properly formed, I'll often just snag a few leaves away and eat the outer leaves. Yum, yum, yum. Actually, that one's looking really nice as well, isn't it? Lovely. The carrots are doing great I've had loads out already let me just see if I can get in here it's obviously it's easier to see everything now without the nets on but oh, can we see under there that's a leaf that's not carrot but oh, look they're desperate desperate to get out so yeah oh gorgeous gorgeous carrots I might actually try and earth these up a bit just to sort of help protect them from the slugs over the winter but I'm so grateful for all of them because if you remember that took four sowings how ridiculous I felt half this summer I was just re sowing over and over again and then there's these four stray cabbages in this bed as well they're all nicely fattening up the Cavolo Nero next door is going great guns and I almost can't keep on top of eating it, although obviously I do and I will. Such a great winter veg, so hardy. Um, earlier this year I still had a load in at the end of February when we had the snow in March, 
they wilted massively and I thought, oh, I've lost them now. As soon as the snow went, they perked up a bit. Any sign of the Brussels sprouts fattening up? <laughs> no? Oh, so funny. But yeah, like I was saying with my grass cuttings and my edge trimmings, what I'm trying to do is get it all scooped up and it's a mixture of leaves that have blown in as well. Get it all scooped up and put onto the beds just to protect any of the bare bits of soil over the winter. And then obviously the worms can do their business too. And then hopefully come the spring, without too much digging and without too much effort, this will be nice and easy to plant in. And by the time I come to plant this, it will be about May, beginning of June next year, and it will be for squash. My ground growing squash, my horizontal squash, as opposed to the vertical. Beds tucked up for winter. Just starting to have my first celeriac. Gorgeous. Tiny, but gorgeous. It's a good job I'm not trying to feed a family of four with them because they don't go very far. I will give them a go next year again, but I think I'll just put loads more manure in the ground uh, before I plant them. Celery is still keeping me going. I'm actually harvesting this now as a cut and come again, like I used to do with my old variety green Utah, even though this is one that you're supposed to harvest all in one go. Um, I'd rather just have a handful of leaves when I need them. And now the rest of the garden is looking pretty much winterified. Look at all these beds tucked up for winter. So yes, this, the X vine bed last year, that's been tucked up for quite a while. The broad beans here are doing okay. Now I've fixed the netting. I've had to fix it again today actually because the foxes had mashed and smashed. But yeah, where there were gaps, there are some poking through. So I think there will be enough in there come May to give me a really, really lovely harvest. Oh, I can't wait. I'm loving my winter veg, I absolutely adore my winter veg, but of course I am starting to think about summer veg again. The minute it's gone, I want it. <laughs> this bed, <clears throat> excuse my cough, this bed I've now finished covering as well, so where the cocos were. And then this is where I had all the um, climbing squash this year, my cathedral bed as I called it which was only divided into three beds. So you can see I've now divided it into, well, it was three here and then one on the end for the cocoa. But you'll see now it's been divided into four as the start of my little permanent bed system, which meant that, for instance, with the uh, beetroot, you can see where the bed was last year, is now straddling. Oh, let me see if I can step back to give you a better, a better idea. It's now straddling two new beds so I harvested down the middle here because that's forming one of the new permanent paths the beetroot have been great though let me just show you, there's still loads to come some of them are absolute socking great size too I mean look at these ones compared to my hands yay oh that one looks like an earwig's had a bit of it but yeah I um I always leave my beetroot in over winter. Nice bit of colour, it's a bit of habitat, it's protecting the soil, but more than that, it's just a great veg for me to have over the winter. I really enjoy it. This bed on the end has also had a similar treatment where I've had to harvest the chard out of the end of here to begin this whoop, new path. Actually, I think it's probably going to be easier Bear with me while I come around. Now, this is a bit of a problem at the moment. I'm running out of bricks <laughs> to weigh cardboard down. One has to just improvise and be a bit inventive as a gardener, eh? So yeah, this path wasn't where the path was in the summer. It's kind of slightly more over here. Um, so I do need to find just a little bit of something to chuck on the soil there to keep it covered over winter. I'm hoping that I might be able to help with the communal mow, the final mowing of our communal paths before the winter really sets in. And if I do, then hopefully I can get some grass clippings. But yeah, 
It's really pleasing to have got this bed finally tucked up for winter. In doing it, I've used up the last here and here of my saved leaves from last year. So coming around to this bed, we'll get there in a second. Purple sprouting broccoli. It's such a beautiful, beautiful shade of green at this time of year, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. That's growing away perfectly happily. And again, every now and again, I'll nick one or two of its leaves. Just lightly steamed or in a cabbage pie, that sort of thing. Gorgeous. The garlic are doing at absolutely great happy garlic again i really really want to get all the gaps between them mulched <laughs> excuse me <clears throat> this ground really gets pelted by rain over the winter and it just it compacts the soil so much it's hideous and speaking of compact soil this is the last weed bed that i need to dig out Actually, let me come this way, it'll be easier to see. So, I've rejigged this bed as well into the five permanent mini beds. One is where the purple sprouting is, two, where the garlic is. This one that had the fennel in that still needs turning over a bit. This where, what was here? Oh, tomatoes and chickpeas, parsnips and calendula. So with the calendula, it's obviously it's over so what I'll do is I'll I'll whip it out I'll get it all chopped up and then I'm just going to leave it on the surface here because next to it there are my teeny tiny precious tiddly piddly parsnips oh fingers crossed please to come to something yes because like I said I've got no leaves left for covering the ground so I thought a combination of chopped up calendula and the achocha that's on the back of the fence can uh, just be plopped on there. This bed, I did have to dig out what was a path this summer. I need to do a little bit more actually on this side, just edge it a bit that way. But again, with having no leaves, all I've done is that's the pile that's been sitting around for ages of the remnants of beans and some bits of squash what have you and I've just chopped down all the fennel and I was taking off some of the dying brassica leaves so it's all just dumped for now I will try and get it covered with cardboard when I can get some more cardboard and then that bed once that's had a bit of a tickle I'm hoping there's a little bit just a little bit left in the compost bin that will be enough for me to get it covered if nothing else if I really don't have enough compost, I'll get it covered in cardboard just to help protect it a little bit from the winter rain. But yeah, that is definitely a garden that is mostly tucked up for winter. Obviously, this top bed, bed number one, is still producing quite actively. And I've got these little bits going on here. But yes, oh, I can see my breath suddenly. Yes, it's winter. Now, I've got to make space in the herb bed for a rhubarb. I've never had a rhubarb because I've never had room for one, but my mum has kindly sent me one. So what I'm thinking is, I was initially thinking about popping it over here next to the Taunton Dean perennial kale, but I just think there's not enough space for the pair of them. So that's gonna stay put where it is. But what I'm thinking is, where I started the path there, the brick path, it was going to come all the way down here as a place for me to sort of step in so that I could harvest either side because it's a little bit too wide to stretch in from both sides. Now, what I'm now thinking is I can just put a little stepping stone here somewhere, have the path, but only bring the path to about here just so it's enough so I can harvest. And then here in the end, right there, is pop the rhubarb in. That's what I'm thinking. I'm so happy I got this hair bed started this year. I know I've said that over and over again, but honestly, every day it gives me such joy to look at. There's not much else going on at the moment. We're definitely getting into that 
tidying up part of the uh, bit of maintenance. So for example, at the moment, oopsie, <laughs> all my paws are just flung, but I've now got a little plan for these, <clears throat> which I'll get on with in the next week or so. And it's that great time of year, isn't it, December, where, look, the garden is pretty much looking after itself. So now I can get on with maintenance, I can get on with fixing things and I can just spend time like I have today sitting outside my shed quietly for a few minutes just listening to the birds and breathing. Oh, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So there we have it, the garden in December quite tucked up, probably like I should be. I'm starting to shiver, the camera's wobbling. I think that's my cue, all oh, my fingers have gone numb. I think that's my cue to say cheerio to you all. Have fun in your gardens, whatever you're up to. If you can't get into your garden because it's knee deep in snow already, well, I hope you can enjoy a bit of my garden and anyone else's that has still got a little bit of green in them. See you all again soon. In the meantime, take care everyone.